how many people do we know have had the virus? We talk about a second wave <coughs> of infection. We used to talk about herd immunity. How many people are now immune to it? Well, there's been a few studies now that we have this new antibody test that can detect prior infection. The news isn't great, actually. On average, it's only about one in 10 people have been exposed to this virus, which leaves, of course, a whopping 90% of people vulnerable. So what are exactly the risks of, of a second wave? If you reopen the economy, and I know this is a balance between, I guess, economists and scientists, but as a scientist, you know, <coughs> could it be as bad as it was early March, or does it, does it actually gradually come down if we social distance? Well, it's not a question of whether there'll be a second wave. There will be one. How big it is will depend on how we react as we ease up the lockdown. So if you have a really robust contact tracing and quarantine, so testing and quarantine and contact tracing, if you've got that nailed, you're going to be in a good position. But if you just let people out without really following them up, we could be in a position where we will we're back where we started. This is really not the, the end. It's the beginning. <clears throat> Dr. Rohn, as you stated, it's been a most difficult week. Yes, there's glimmers of good news out of Germany, folks. Just as one example, the Washington Post puts a chart on their cover every day, and just simply the last three days in the United States really, really haven't been good. Dr. Rohn, the president of the United States in Pennsylvania in the last 24 hours has announced that testing is maybe not that good, that maybe it's, quote, overrated. As a scientist, with your work on cat viruses, with your pathbreaking work on how cells die, explain to those of us that don't know what you do, what you're focused on right now with this pandemic. Well, as I mentioned before, Tracing and testing is absolutely crucial. There's no way we're going to get this under control without it until we have a vaccine. The vaccine is at least 18 months, two years away. So it's important because when you let people out, if you don't catch the ones that are infected and stop them from contacting others, we'll be right back where we started. So it is, it, testing, it cannot be overemphasized. And if you look at all the countries, like, for example, in Asia, that, were really, that are really good on this, uh, they're doing great. The countries that aren't good at it aren't doing great. And that, that correlation is not a coincidence. How do you respond to those who suggest with cell phones that tracing is an impingement of rights? Well, I mean, if you you have to weigh this against, you know, the the, the societal benefit of being able to contain this incredibly bad pandemic. So people will die and the economy will keep tanking if we don't get it under control. So obviously we wanna strike a balance between personal liberties and tracking the virus, but honestly, I think everybody just wants to come up with this virus. Do we have medicine to be able to treat it effectively if people do become ill? Are we in a better place now than we were six, six weeks ago? Well, obviously, we have remdesivir, which has been approved for use, but this will only cut the time that you're in hospital by a few days. Obviously, it's better than nothing, and it will hopefully help relieve pressure on healthcare systems, but it's certainly not a magic bullet. There are dozens and dozens of other candidates coming through the pipeline, but as yet, none of these are, are what we need for an actual cure or prevention. Uh, Jen Farone, how, how would you describe you know, the UK government's efforts to stem the virus so far? Well, I, I think that they acted too late on the lockdown, and you know, hindsight is, is brilliant, but I think that could have happened quicker. Now we're, we're relaxing the lockdown. I think we're, we're going to be more cautious. I'm hoping that all of the contact tracing and apps that are, that are being developed now are going to be uh, effective, but actually, I don't think they're quite ready yet. Most people think they're not really going to be seriously bedded in until next month. So we just have to watch and wait. What should, be, what should we be watching for? Is it number of infections? I mean, is the ideal, I guess, way of dealing with this and reopening slowly whilst making sure that there's not too much pressure on the health service so that our people in the front line can stay safe, but also if you're sick and require a hospital bed, you have access to one? I mean, that, those are both really important points. I, I think... It, the infection is going to roll. We have no herd immunity. We're nowhere near herd immunity. We don't even know if herd immunity will occur once we're at 50 percent, which is the magic number. Uh, as long as people get infected, keep getting infected, we're going to have that percent chance of death. And yes, we have to keep that curve flattened so that we don't send everyone to the hospital at the same time. 
How do you respond, doctor, and this is more a public health issue, to the idea that we're supposed to become less socially distanced by wearing masks, oftentimes cheap masks, and maybe latex gloves? How does a pro like you respond to that quote unquote protection? Well, the mask thing has been evolving, as you know. Initially, everybody said, no, they're rubbish. You don't don't use them. Now we're saying maybe yeah. you should use them. To be honest with you, I mean, anything is better than nothing if you have any barrier over your face. If somebody coughs or sneezes, there's just been a study showing that talking can emit virus particles, and they can linger for 14 minutes in the air. So I think a mask is a good idea, especially on public transport or other enclosed places. Latex gloves are only as good as your behavior. So if you touch something, uh, you pick up some virus, and then you touch your face, it's game over. So yes, latex gloves can help, but you have to train yourself not to touch your face afterwards. One final question. What's your advice for Prime Minister Johnson? What's his to-do list to engage the nation this weekend? Well, he's got. it's a beautiful weekend. We've had some cold weather. It's now gorgeous outside, so people are going to be wanting to flock to beauty spots and other places. He's got to keep that message really strong. Social distancing is still here, despite the fact that we're allowed out. We really have to keep those two meters of distance. We have to be careful, and we take this for granted. We are nowhere near the end of this pandemic.